balance around regulation between government and the profession is always one that there's going to be a little bit of give and take. Importantly here, the spirit in which both groups should enter into conversations where change is needed is that we all share the common goal. The holy grail, whichever way regulation is delivered, is to ensure quality and quality that is not challenged in any way undermining ethics or integrity. What we do see as a real challenge going forward is that things can move slightly different out of cycle. And by that I mean that when perhaps there's an economic turndown is when there is more challenges around regulation. So you can find the cycle of government regulation flowing behind the economic, uh, the economic cycle. And the challenge here is that you do not impose greater restrictions on a business and on professionals at an economic point when you're actually looking for growth and prosperity. Well, in terms of the role of associations and government in um, providing and setting regulatory standards, I think both have a really, really important role to play. And I think the, the best model is when uh, government or, re or bodies representing government are working in partnership with, uh, with those associations to make sure that we're setting those standards and we're holding the, the members of those organisations uh, accountable for practising uh, to those standards. And I think if that's done effectively and if uh, those government bodies and the associations work in partnership, then I think the, the system hangs together well. I think if there's only one component of that that works and that is problematic. I think if there's a, a need for government to come in and to actually uh, address some issues within a professional um, professional group, then I think that um, tells me that that professional association representing that group hasn't been as effective as it should have been in terms of representing that uh, those professionals. Uh, and likewise, um, I can think of instances where without that government support and without those government standards, then the associations, if left to their own devices, wouldn't necessarily have uh, the muscle to be able to exercise the kind of uh, responsibility that I think um, is more effectively achieved through government and associations working in partnership. There's been a lot of discussion in economic theory about this and the so-called delegated model. Uh, and I think that's a good way. We don't have that in Victoria. Um, the danger with having an external regulator is that the temptation to impose further red tape is far too high. Uh, I think that the association has a stronger role there then that can be tempered with the business requirements and also the professional standards requirements. Um, so it's, it's a balance. Uh, the other issue is around how much of a police, policing model you have as against a risk profiling model. And we know that risk profiling models are very expensive uh, and they require our would require our members to get in shadow auditors to make sure that when the, the Legal Services Commissioner arrives that they're, they're not going to be faced with losing a practising certificate. The other aspect is that the uh, uniform law is the only piece of legislation on our statute book, as well as being the second largest, that embeds consumer interests uh, on councils and, in, and has a uh, unique and separate complaint handling scheme to the general consumer uh, law complaint handling scheme. So again, that balance seems to be uh, skewed a bit uh, in terms of highly interventionist regulation and a lesser of a role for a self-regulatory model. At its worst, the external regulator does not have access to information about what's going on in the profession and the capacity of the association to step in and take preventative action before things do get uh, extreme in terms of outcomes for consumers. And that's the loop I'm trying to work on with our Legal Services Commissioner right now, but it's a lot of work. So there is a balance. I, I think we're a bit out of balance in Victoria. Uh, and in contrast to New South Wales, where the Law Society maintains a lot of the regulatory functions itself. The 
future prospects for co-regulatory solutions in Victoria um, will depend on what happens in the national sphere. The other jurisdictions that have not joined the Uniform Law Scheme are watching what's happening to us with great interest. Uh, and if they say this is too expensive, too interventionist, and we've got China on our doorstep, and we've got disruptive technology happening, then there's, it will be time for a rethink. Uh, and that, I see, is the path, the path forward.